Okay, so here's the basic information from our problem. That's a product mix problem from DJJ Enterprises, an auto parts manufacturing company. We're producing two parts through them, a camshaft and a gear. Now, we're going to produce a whole lot of these parts, but we want to decide how many in order to, pro in order to produce the most amount of profit. So we're going to make a decision on the, on the number of camshafts and the number of gears that we make. Now as you can see, it costs $25, or I mean, we make $25 in profit per camshaft, and we make $15 per gear in profit. Now the products are made up of these materials and resources. We've got five pounds of steel per camshaft, one labor hour, and three machine hours. Similarly, for one gear, it takes eight pounds of steel, four labor hours, and two machine use hours. We're limited here by the amount of resources available. We only have 5,000 pounds of steel, we only have 1,500 hours of labor, and 1,000 of hours, 1,000 hours of machine use that we can use. We can't, we can't use any more than that. So, with this information, we're going to then create a formulation, as you see down here we decide what our decision variables are going to be. X1 represents the total number of camshafts that we're going to make and X2 for the gears. And our objective function, which we're going to maximize in this case, is 25 times X1 plus 15 times X2. And this will give us the total profit made based upon the number of camshafts and gears we decide to make. And as we said before, we are limited in our resource use. The first row of this constraint is the steel use. We know that 5 times x1 plus 8 times x2 will tell us the total amount of steel that we've used once we decide on the number of camshafts and the number of gears that we're going to make. This equation is a, is a less than or equal to equation. And on the right hand side, we have the constraint, which is 5,000 pounds of available steel. So as you can see, these other equations that work the exact same way. And that's how we build our constraint equations for the product mix problem. The x1 and x2 being greater than or equal to zero is a rule of thumb. We don't want to produce a negative amount of camshafts or gears, so we just want them to be zero or greater than zero. And that is the formulation. The next step is to develop a spreadsheet model that will optimize the number of camshafts and gears to create the most amount of profit.